The big game is finally here. Some people go to the big game parties for the chili, others go for the chips and dip. Only those in the know are there for the real action. Action that can only be found on DraftKings Sportsbook. Now I'm teaming up with DraftKings to give y'all new customers a winning offer. All new customers, all you gotta do is sign up to DraftKings using my promo code TBC. Bet at least $5 on a big game and you'll instantly receive an additional $200 in bonus bets. Now how dope is that? I'm telling you, new customers bet just $5 on the big game and you instantly get $200 in bonus bets deposited right into your account. Now wondering, what could you use that $200 in bonus bets on? So many different things, right? Try out same game parlays, where you can combine multiple bets from one game, like which team will have the most passing yards, or who will score the first touchdown of the night for even bigger winnings. Now, if mobile sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry, it's all good. You can still get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code TBC, bet $5 on a big game and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code TBC. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. That's right. His album comes out this Friday. Feels Good is the name of the album, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Yes, Feels. Yes. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Good How to you be feeling? here, man. I feel good. I feel good. I feel amazing, man. Last time I saw you, I, you didn't see me, but I saw you. I saw you at uh, Afrocello. Yeah. I saw you performing at Afrocello, and I saw oh, you uh, kicking it in the crowd later on. Yeah, Ghana was, Ghana was fun. Oh, my God. Ghana was, Ghana was fun, for sure. How did it feel performing out there? Oh, uh, man, I, I always wanted to perform on that stage and perform mm -hmm. in Ghana. And um, the first time I performed in Ghana was with Usher at the Global Citizen um, um, show. But then Afrochella was lit as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after the performance, of course, I had to, like, you know, kick it in the crowd and watch Burner because I'm a huge Burner fan. Mm -hmm. And just watch Burner perform and just have fun. And thank you, too, yeah. man. You know, uh, we had Phil. He performed for us in uh, Nashville last year when, yeah. uh, you know, the Black Effect and iHeartRadio, we did a HBCU event. We invited all these HBCU students mm -hmm. to Nashville, and he performed out there, too. So thank you, man. Oh, you're welcome, man. Uh, bro, like, I love performing, man. Feels, feels on stage is my favorite feels. And I love just sharing energy as much as I can on stage with the fans and with the people. Now, you're Nigerian, right? Yes. Now, yeah. how, how does it feel to see the fact that the music is crossing over and breaking in all these different countries now? Because at one time, I, tra I would travel to, to Africa, South Africa, Kenya to do shows and a lot of parties. And it was just, you'd see it there was something amazing. But now the fact that so many other people are, are enjoying it, how does that feel? Man, it's a blessing, man, to be very honest. Like, like these are things that we would dream of back in school, mm -hmm. you know, as, you know, um, students just dreaming about the Grammys or dreaming about the billboards or dreaming about the plaques. Um, yesterday, I got my first first plaque for finesse. It went gold in um, France. France and oh, like, congrats. Bro, like, that blew my mind. And I'm like, yo, like, this is where we are right now. This is the conversation right now. And it's just a blessing we don't take for granted at all. That was your first plaque? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I figured for that's what oh, you was a producer, here. artist. Yeah. And that's your wow! Crazy, congratulations, right? man. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, that, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and, and how does it feel that you know, you have to? They're gonna have to change some of these these categories, like, like the Grammys and Billboards. They're gonna have to make a Afro Beats section because there's so many artists and so much music coming out. Did you ever see that? Um, yeah, I did, but I got a problem with sections, though. Why? Because, man, like there's so much that the world needs to learn about. Afro beats like first off man like it's not it's not a music first it's a spirit first it's not a sound like it that. starts from the spirit like mm -hmm. for you to understand that sound you need to understand the spirit of mm -hmm. like where I come from and Africa and live the life that's why like I would encourage everybody to come to Nigeria and like eat the food like meet the children on the street like it's all love like forget what the we just have bad press but Nigeria is amazing mm -hmm. um yeah, man, like, just come, like, live the life, enjoy the spirit, and then you understand the sound. Because, bro, like, Afrobeat is not just one sound. It's a whole world of sounds. Right. And I feel like putting that in a box is just not safe and healthy for, like, the creative minds of every African artist. Because, like, there's so much we can do. Like, Afrobeat or the Afro genre is a genre that can, like, cross-pollinate with other genres and make different genre babies, like Afro jazz, Afro and B. You know, we have mm. Afro piano. We have Afro fusion with Burner Boy. Like... Hey, bro, there's so much we can do, man. They do, because they do it with, you, you figure with, like, reggae music, right? There's reggae music, there's dance hall, there's so many different categories, but they Facts. all clump it in 
reggae music. Yes. So I don't like I'm like, bro. I just I just think we need to educate each other on like the Afro spirit, and I think that that's on like me and that's on every single um, African artist and African creative to educate the world about like where we're from and what we're trying to achieve and who we actually are. What you said just now is exactly why I think uh, Afro beats are all the subsidiaries of Afro beats is going to end up being the biggest black music genre in the world because Facts. you know we have meetings and I'm like man you know sometimes it feels like hip hop is a is a death style right mm -hmm. and the spirit of afro beach is so positive it's so pleasant it's it's so uplifting that's the reason i think it's going to end up being the biggest black music genre in the world oh, i appreciate that man I, I see that happening for sure uh no disrespect to hip hop but man afro beat is different bro mm -hmm. like it's it's a bro, feeling like you said it's a feeling it's a, it's a spirit it's it's triumph it's it's how we, you know, stay sane in the face of, you know, hardship and like mm -hmm. madness. You get me? Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like it's so positive and it's just high energy because like that's how we like, you know, stay sane up here. Like every single Nigerian finds happiness any way they can. And like that's like the most beautiful thing about Nigeria. I mean, like no matter what we go through, we find happiness in those situations. And like that's the Afro spirit. What do you, you think the big, the big breakthrough for the genre was? It's It's a couple of things, man. It's... I mean, it's whiskey doing three days at the O2 Arena back to back. Mm. It's you know, it's Bono Boy winning the Grammys. It's uh, Essence stopping all the chats. It's Thames becoming Thames right now. It's, Davido. It's Davido, you know, blowing the roof off everything. It's it's crazy, man. It's so many moments that has happened that has just you know put, uh, brought us here. And I'm just so I'm so blessed to be one of the people like that are in the forefront and you know championing this movement and moving into the next level for the for the next generation. Like that's a blessing I don't take for granted, man. How was working with? Uh, they said you work with with Diddy and, and, and Dr. Oh, Dre and man. a couple other producers. How was that? Oh, man. Explain how <laughs> did those meetings happen. Yo, like it's one of those moments where I actually had to take a break. I told Dre like, you know, I just need like two minutes. I need to find the restroom. So Dre, you need yeah. two minutes. I'm like, I need to go to the restroom. Well, how'd you I went meet to Dre? First of all, how'd you get in the studio with Dre? How'd you meet Dre? Oh man, it was um, it was through L.A. Reid. Mm -hmm. Um, so there there was a song I made with Usher. That I can't wait for the world to hear. Cause, oh, it's not even out yet? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Um, so I think Ellery played it for Jimmy Ivan, mm -hmm. and Jimmy told Dre about me. And, um, you know, Dre, Dre asked me to link up for sure. And then we linked up in the studio. And, bro, just being with Dre, like, because I grew up on Dre's music. I grew up on The Chronic. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like, so just being in the room with him, you know, listening to the sound um, from his speakers and playing in my songs as well. Bro, we're on the keyboard. We're playing chords and just, you know, exchanging like music knowledge and just talking about the genre talking about hip-hop talking about like everything else bro like i had to just take two minutes to go to the restroom and stare at myself in the mirror and be like okay <laughs> we are here now <laughs> you having like a, a little yeah. anxiety attack or something <laughs> fact <laughs> oh, bro that was dr dre bro like word. for me that's huge huge like i had to go to the restroom and just get my mind in order and be like okay you are feels that's dre let's go how do you calm yourself down when you're having those anxiety attacks? Like, what do you do? Breathing exercises, prayer, what, what, meditation? What Push-ups, where? <laughs> uh, sometimes jumping jacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes jumping jacks. But, like, bro, like, being in the studio with Dre and Didi and Snoop and Tank and everybody. And, and that was the first time um, Dre and Didi ever had a session ever in the history of hip hop and like oh they I did it together to, yeah oh so everybody was in there yeah oh everybody yeah was in there. It was oh so Didi and Dre got a in the studio I think everybody would have had to take a couple minutes it was wild bro are we about to hear some Afro beats by Dre we'll see I think the world is gonna hear that soon or less but right. yeah so what's the record is you Dre it's Dre it's me it's um, Snoop it's Diddy it's Tank it's it's just everybody just putting in input and just you know On just creating record? art man yeah whose record is it we don't know yet, bro. Wow. <laughs> We're just making music. Sounds bro. Like, so now <laughs> performing on it though, you Snoop and Tank. Um, I was producing as well, and okay. I was dropping some vocals as well. You know, we had you know bunch of people in the studio. Diddy came with like his writers and producers. Like it was just a lot of people just creating magic, and it was a man. It was just a beautiful thing. To I got to hear this record. Bro. Now, now I got a question. It as a amazing, new artist, bro. how do you? You know, because you got these legends, right? So how do you jump in to give your point of view on something? Because you know, you you with Dre, you with Diddy. Well, they called I, you, you so, Tank, but you yeah. still gotta feel away, bro. I know, I know what. Like, regardless of, oh yeah, like that's Dre. Oh yeah, that's my, you know, idol. That's Diddy. But I know what I carry, man. Like, I have the Afro spirit in me, and like mm -hmm. that controls the room anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. put me in any room, bro. I got you. You get me. Like, I might be starstruck for like two seconds, but after that, it's on. I, I want to <laughs> ask you about. You said you said you grew up on uh, the Chronic, right? So. Oh, I was literally having this conversation yesterday. What, what year was that when you... 
man, like that was in what, like when I was in secondary school, when I was um, that was like in the two thousands, early two thousands, early two thousands. Yeah. So who, who, in your mind, just who's the biggest rapper globally? Like who was, cause you all the way in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In my mind, um, that list would be Kanye West, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, Eminem, Fifty Cent, Drake. But that list is long. Snoop and Dre yes. got to be in yeah. there. Snoop, yeah, Snoop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Snoop, Dr. Dre. Because um, the question somebody asked me yesterday was like, who has, who has had the most cultural and commercial impact out of Snoop, 50, Wayne, who was it? Snoop, Snoop 50, Wayne, and Eminem. Ooh. Snoop. And Kanye. Snoop 50, Wayne, Eminem, and Kanye. See, Who's had the most cultural Kanye. and commercial impact? See, the thing with Kanye is more than music. It's, I said Snoop. It's lifestyle. It's clothes. It's Ooh. sneakers. It's it's yeah, everything. He's the production. Yeah, you know what I mean? True, that's true. But I, it would yeah. be between Kanye and and and, and definitely Snoop. I said Snoop. Yeah, Kanye's I think, different though. I think I think it'll be, it, it'll be between Kanye and Snoop. Or right. yeah. What, what's the toughest part about being a, a, a Afro beats artist, especially here in America? Oh man. Um. Like it, like it goes back to like what I said initially, man. Like now I feel like you know what we're 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 getting into a point where we're going to be put in a box and that scares me because like I said there's so much more we can offer and like I just need like I feel like I just need the world and like over here to like be willing to learn and allow us teach mm -hmm. like I feel like that's where we need to get to now like because there's so much that's coming from Nigeria that cannot fit in a box like that's just detrimental mm -hmm. <laughs> you get me like that's that's what i think the the toughest thing is right now like we need to just get out of that box and show the world that yo we are more than one sound we are more than one vibe we are more than we're more than the world can actually accept but it's changed I, so much like i just remember being a kid is you know at first we made fun of kids all kids made fun of africans they made fun of caribbean people made fun of haitians then it became cool to be caribbean and around caribbeans it's cool to be, you know, African and, and listen to African music. So I, I love the change, the 360, because I, yes. I could imagine if you ever came here as a kid and you said you were from Nigeria, the first thing people would make fun of you. But now it's like it's a culture, it's a vibe. They want that vibe. I want you to know that's a New York thing. That was, <laughs> that, that that was, New York that thing. was not my experience down south. <laughs> I was walking around with the African medallion on. You, you know people what I mean? Wore the, I mean, we still wore the African medallion, but people made fun of Haitians. They made fun of Caribbean people. Made fun of Africans. I'm Africa sure, but I, we, I always had reverence for Africa. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I always Respect knew that was the motherland. And coming from Charleston, South Carolina, like Gatson's Wharf, that pier, mm -hmm. um, I think they say like 60% of all enslaved Africans came from West Africa through that port. So I always oh. had... I always feel like I had a connection to it. Mm. That's Africa. amazing. You ever been to Nigeria? No, man. I want to go, yeah, man. Couple been trying to get me to come man. out there forever, yes, man. For sure. I want to go. I've been to Ghana. I've been to South Africa. I've never been to Nigeria. I want to go. Yeah, there. you should. You should come, man. Nigeria will change your life, bro. Really? It will. Hey, why see how? And that's it what they say. how dangerous <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, like I think, bro. I just think we have bad PR, man. Like I feel like in every country, there's you know there are areas where like you know you can't go at at a particular time mm -hmm. or at a certain time in like you know the history, but like. Bro, Nigeria, bro, Lagos. <sighs> I heard. I'm coming. Bro. I'm going. Hey, me and me and Cuppy been talking. You know Cuppy, right? Yeah. Me and Cuppy been talking about this forever. I'm definitely going. I, I'll probably go this year. Actually, facts, facts. Actually. You're welcome, man. I got you when you come as well. All right, wait, wait. Yeah, sure. Y'all right. got uh, y'all got a silver fox out there. I heard. Oh, we started silver fox in Nigeria, bro. <laughs> That's, yes, this guy. You know the vibes. This guy <laughs> went to silver fox <laughs> one time and will not stop talking Yo, about silver yeah. fox. Silver like, fox is amazing. wild. He went there with a, with a hundred dollars and he, he said it made him feel like he was. I don't even know well, what. I, I that was the one in Ghana. The one in Ghana. Yes. That was my first time going. I never yes. had, you know, when, when, first of all, when I heard they had a strip club in Ghana, I'm like, what? We got to go see what that's about, you yeah. know? And then they told me it started in Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. Silver Fox in Nigeria is wild, man. Like, like they were flying girls from like all around the world and like, pff, see, I don't want feels. that. Though. No, like, that's I want just the African like, one. Oh, yeah, the Africans yeah. are beautiful. But like, yeah. I mean, like, we like having fun in Nigeria, man. Like, yeah. So, like, we're just flying sometimes and just, you know, but yeah, Silver, there's also a new one um, called Secret Palace in Lagos. <laughs> Look at this guy's eyes. Really? <laughs> My Nigeria, <laughs> really. <laughs> now, you know, I, I like what y'all talk about with the categories, right? Because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn, where would a Fields be if he was nominated? Where would a Tim's go if she was nominated here in America? They'll like, put him in world music. World music. That's what they put, okay, world okay, music, okay, okay. which I hate. World but Tim's, music. Tim's could be R&B to me. Facts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Burner Boy could be R&B to me. Facts. Yeah. Hmm. Facts. But it's considered world music. So that's what you mean when you say you hate categories? That's what I mean. Okay. Like, 
there's so much that we can do like we have so much talent and like that box just wouldn't wouldn't fit it's just uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah that's what i mean what do you what, what elements do you think uh you know african artists need to do to keep that authentic african sound because i mean now with it getting embraced so worldwide i don't want to hear y'all start sounding like other oh, places yeah i feel you um i just think man you can never forget home like yes you know the the outreach is amazing yes i'm in america yes you know i'm performing at the brooklyn nets game i'm doing shows I'm, but you can never ever ever forget home like i would always live in lagos mm -hmm. like we got, I'm a, i might have a, a house over here in america, america or a house in london but i would always live in lagos because like i said it's the spirit first before the sound you can never lose touch with the spirit and that's really important for me and i think that should be really important for every single african act out there how, Never lose touch with home. How do you feel when when artists start to adapt to your music, start taking the culture, right? Like I remember last year, uh, I'll go back to reggae. I think the reggae artist that won is from Virginia, and they were white, and you know, reggae artists were upset about that. Jamaican artists were upset about that. So how do you feel when you start seeing? You're gonna start seeing that more and more, and people using Definitely. it in their stuff. The way I see that, bro, like. It's nice, man. It's beautiful. It's like you know have other people, you know, try it out and, like, you know, see how this tastes. You get me? But, like, for me, like, if you're not from the soil, it wouldn't feel authentic. It might sound the same, but there's something about the feeling of Africa and the feeling of the Afrobeat sound. That's just... I can give you my laptop and give you all the kits and all the softwares and all the sounds and everything that I use. But if you use that and you make a beat or you make music, it would not feel like you're from Africa. Or you will not feel like you're from the motherland. So like that alone is like for me is like a safety net because I know that like no matter how you try to like replicate or duplicate this sound, you need to connect to the source to actually get it right. You get me? So like I respect people trying to like, you know, um get inspired by the sound and create something new and something fresh. But I'll also like advise you to go back to the motherland first and connect with the spirit. Then you can be authentic with it. Why do you think so much is coming out of Nigeria right now? Like, why, why out, of, out of all of the countries in Africa, why is Nigeria the one that's that's leading the charge? Bro, there's always been a lot in Nigeria. It's not just right now. Like, the street is flooded with talent. Like, a normal kid, a street kid in Nigeria would drop some bars on you, and you'd be like, damn. Mm -hmm. Like, the melodies, the harmonies, and it's, just, it's not just the music. It's the art, it's the fashion, mm -hmm. it's the food, it's tech. So, like, Nigeria is so blessed, and I'm so grateful that the world is paying attention to us right now because then, like, everything can come to the light and like, we can bless the world with what we have and, like, how we grow and how we glow. How do so, you feel about Senegal being named as having the best Jollof rice? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. <laughs> because Senegal, Nigeria has the best Jollof rice. Yeah, according to this, me this anyway. study, they said Senegal... I had Nigerian rice. I had Ghana, but this study says Senegal had the best job. I don't know who's carrying out that study, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's doing that study, man. But they probably never had Nigerian jollof, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So who's, Nigerian next, jollof, who, who's sure. next from Nigeria? Who should the people be watching out? People watching this, you know, they they might they they're picking up your project. But who's next? Who they should be looking out for? Bro, there are a lot, man. Um, there's a kid named Victoni. He's my friend. He's amazing. Um, there's Young John as well. Young John is amazing. Um. There's um there's Benson man Benson was on finesse mm -hmm. yeah Benson is whew, Benson is amazing as well bro like the street is filled up with talents man mm -hmm. talents back to back um there's Damio Nero she's amazing as well yeah man and for the A process couple. you know for, for for US artists right we know the process they put it up on Instagram or social media they get a record deal that goes so what's the process for an artist like yourself to get a deal and to get heard what do you have to do to get it out there. To be honest, bro, like in 2023, I don't really think there's a formula anymore, man. It's the wild, wild west out here. <laughs> that's, that's it's the wild, wild that's west out here, bro. Um, that's a fact. Man, like I I just make my music and just, you know, give the rest to the fans and to the universe and to God, man. Like, because sitting here, like I used to, like I would watch The Breakfast Club on YouTube and be like, damn, like I really want to be here. And like now I'm here sitting with you guys mm -hmm. and talking and like, this is not me doing it. This is the universe just putting me in this path and just, mm -hmm. like, you get me? Like, it's the wild, wild west, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you just have to make art that's, like, that you think is cool and just leave the rest of the universe and the fans and God, man. Gotcha. And you, yeah. got, uh, you got finesse and you got electricity yes, yes. moving right now. Why put out an EP? Why not Why not go album? It's not, I, I don't think it's time for the album yet because mm 
because for me like i've been producing in africa for like 12 years now and they, they call me the album guy because then like artists come to me and be like oh yo i want you to produce my album and the whole entire project so like i feel like for my own personal album i'm extra like critical with how i want it to sound and how i want it to like move and i also want to like spoon feed my fans like i don't want to like rush them with too many sounds i want to take it batch by batch and just walk them through my journey and just grow together with them it's very important to teach your mm -hmm. fans and just allow them like grow you get me i always wonder what's the difference with like between music when you make an ep or when you're making album to me it's just number of tracks to be honest right, um right, right. yeah but um but the album for me is gonna be more vulnerable that's what i'm trying to get to mm -hmm. like um i believe so much in the fact that like the higher i go the more human i want to become mm -hmm. i don't just want to be a star that's just up there feeling like superman and feeling untouchable and like i don't have problems or i don't have my errors or my flaws you get me so like that album i'm going to put all my flaws and all my you know humanness in that and that's what i'm trying to do but first the ep it feels good man it's called feels good it's about like talking about like three different feelings and how all that feels good like it's the lover boy feeling, it's the bad boy feeling, you know, the homie at the club that just wants to pop champagne and listen to songs like Finesse, mm -hmm. songs like Balling, or you want to boogie down and listen to songs like Electricity, or you want to do slow strokes with like the red lights and you and your girl and you listen to songs like Stand By You, because mm -hmm. that one is tested and trusted. Mm -hmm. You know, I call it the slow stroke song. It's a song called Stand By You, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. The slow stroke song. Slow stroke. It's tested and trusted. Believe me. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. it's tested and trusted. You know, a lot of women in America think that African men spend a lot of money. Like we had Lala up here, and Lala said that every woman she know got an African man on the side who spends a lot of money. So, you know, they're gonna be expecting you to trick to get some of them we, slow strokes. Yes, we we know how to we know we know how to treat our women for sure. We know how to like take care of, you know, a woman and like spend on her and like make her like appreciate her like we we have deep respect for women and i think that comes from our mothers and how we are raised yeah what's the most you ever spent on a woman <sighs> you know like a couple thousand maybe really yeah car jewelry watch uh, chain uh, crib chain you know bags you know, clothes just shopping basically. when you gave her that did she say are you a prince uh, <laughs> what's, wrong with you, man? <laughs> what's wrong with you man <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious, man. No, nah, man. I mean, like, it was it was amazing sex after that. So, yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. How, how important is it for Black Americans and Africans to build these bridges? I think I think it's the most important thing right now. Like, because the one thing that I think um I need to say is. Yes, the Afrobeat sound is amazing. Yeah, it comes from our soul. But another thing I don't think we can um, neglect is the impact that Black American music had on Afrobeats. Right. And how, like, you know, we merged, like, sonically. You get me? Because growing up, you know, like I said, I would grow on the chronic. I would listen to, you know, songs from Boys to Men, like down to gospel songs from Donnie McClurkin and Fred Hammond. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, be inspired from that, like... I feel like um, we don't give, as Afrobeat artists, we don't give enough credit to black American music for, you know, inspiring us mm -hmm. in ways that it did. You get me? Because um, when you pick um, Fela, for example, like Fela was inspired Fela by, you know, Kuchu. jazz and, yeah. and funk. And mm -hmm. like he mixed that with the, you know, the Afro spirit and created Afrobeat. You get me? Like, so I think, you know, that collaboration needs to be a lot more right now. Like mm -hmm. there's so much we can achieve together. Like the world is literally at our fingertips. We just need to unite and take over the world. And I'm, I'm so happy that music is the first, you know, platform that we get to do that together. And like, mm -hmm. for it's such a beautiful thing to experience, man. I feel like the music is bringing us home. Facts. I know that it sounds Facts. strange to say, but like if you hear Afro beats, you're like, man, I want to go hear this where it's mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. And then when you go and you, you're in a Ghana and you're listening, you're like, man, I get it now. I t like when you go to Afro Chell, you're like, yo, I get it. Like, yeah. You know, I feel like the music's bringing us back home. Mm -hmm. I think he really had fun in Ghana. Yeah, oh, we need to talk about your Ghana experience because I think you really had fun. That's amazing. I'm glad you did. I loved it. Like I got property there and everything. I'm, Ooh, I'm gonna get more. Yes. No, I love. I love. Yes. It. I loved Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, when they tell you welcome home, it really did. You know, fact. Feel like that. Fact. Lagos has to be next for sure. I'm going this year. Fact. We're going to Lagos. Well, your album comes out this Friday, and uh, feels good, and we appreciate you for joining us. Last question. You know, you worked with everybody: Diddy, Dre, Tank. Usher, 
Is there somebody else that you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet that you that you got your eye on? Um, Rihanna for sure. Riri. Oof. I think I have a perfect song for Rihanna. Actually, she just needs to hit me up. Oh, uh, we just need to connect. Um, Why you don't hit L.A. Reid. That's, that's yeah. I mean, we're gonna make it work for sure. Have you told L.A. I got this song? For no, Reed? I haven't. That's true. I should send that that's to the L.A. One. He, he signed yeah. to him and Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Who's easier to work with, American artists or African artists? Bro, it depends on the artist, man. Like, like everybody has their own different, you know, personalities and you know, aura and vibe. And I'm very big on energy. So, like, for me, like, if the energy is off, like, it's very uncomfortable for me to create. So I just walk away. Um, but yeah, like, it depends on the artist. It depends on the vibe. Um, African artists, like, they're amazing to work with. And there's some people that are asses as well. Like, this is the same around the world. You get mm -hmm. me? But um, yeah, man. Like, like I also like to work with Drake as well. For sure, um, I have a huge cross on, uh, crush on Rosa, Rosalia, so I think we can make something amazing. That's like very, you get me, Rosalia. Yeah, Who Rosalia. I'm not. She's dope. dope. What, she, what, what kind she's of? She's really dope. She's that for me too. Or? No, no, she's Spanish? Spanish. Yeah. You got a crush on her? Yes. How the African women gonna feel about that? <laughs> they'll understand. <laughs> they'll understand. Clearly, for you sure. singles. If you throwing that out yeah. there like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, feels a single. You know, ready to mingle. You know. Yes. <laughs> you know Rosalia. You see, you know who that yeah, is. Yeah, that's Rosalia. No, I don't, but oh. I'm familiar now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, check her out, man. Our music is dope. All right, now listen, yeah. I want to tell you something. You, you know, just keep it business. You got to pick one. <laughs> you got to pick one. You say you got a song for her, you better have a song for her. That you got to pick one. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. He said it. he had something for her. He didn't say it was a song. He said he got a crop. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. He said he got something for her. I peeped that. You I peeped that. Song. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you're trying to be slick. You're just trying to get her in the studio. Bro, always, man. I'm, I'm, I'm slick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Fields. <laughs> and yes, it's the Breakfast yes. Club. Appreciate you joining us, brother. Thank Let's you for having me, Let's go to a record. Man. What do you want to hear? Finesse? Or you want to play electricity? Both, man. All right. Let's, Let's go. do it. Right, well, you got to ask. All right, here you go. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.